Today we are at Goodwill. I'm going to go in and do something a little different than I normally do. I usually go in and I go for the things that I always go for, but in a recent video I shared that sometimes you need to go and readjust what you get because maybe the things that you always bought and always sold maybe aren't selling as quickly as they used to. So today I'm really going to go in and look for things that maybe I wouldn't normally pick up but do research on the spot to see you know what kind of return of investment if it's going to be something that's a quicker sale or maybe something that I ought to leave behind because I have a lot of long tail items already listed and I think it's about time for me to start getting some quicker selling items into my inventory as well. My name is Margaret, by the way, and with my partner Juan, we have 10 years of combined reselling experience on eBay and other platforms. We make videos helping resellers like yourself become more successful. So whether you're a new reseller or just wanting to ramp up your income, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything that can help you reach those goals. So the first thing that catches my eye is this cactus print picture. It's probably something I could sell locally, but honestly, I was drawn to it for myself. And I had to stop and remind myself that the only things I am picking up are big, high, and fast. And what I mean by that is that I will pick up big lots or groups of things that are like a comic book lot. Things that I have a lot of that I can part out over time, or things that are high, that have a high return on investment, or things that are fast, that have a very fast sell-through rate. So everything that I look at going forward, I have to apply those parameters to, those rules and limits. Is it big, is it high, and is it fast? This might've been something I would've picked up before, maybe to sell on Etsy, it would've been a long tail item, so it is going back. But look what I spy right here. I recognize that ombre red anywhere. This is a Le Creuset. This item, Le Creuset is a fantastic brand, and this is, uh, I believe it's pronounced a tangine, and it is a cast metal with enamel. See there, you can see the bottom, Le Creuset France. These are very expensive. They're about $400 new, and this they're selling for about $9.50 at the, at the Goodwill. Is this big? Is it a big lot? No, it's not a big lot. Does it have a high return on investment? Is it high? Yes. Spending $9.50 to be able to resell it for maybe $145 is definitely a high return on investment. So this is something that may not sell very quick. It may not be a fast seller, but it is something that I'm willing to buy because I know it's going to bring a really big return on investment. Let me share with you real quick how to look this up if you are new to this or maybe you come across something that you're not sure what it is. Here's what you're going to do. So the bottom of this said Le Creuset and then 27. So I'm typing in Le Creuset 27. And the next thing I'm going to do is find something that looks similar to what I've got here. And I see here Tajine. And so I'm going to come up and add that to my search to kind of narrow everything down again. Le Creuset 27 Tajine. And what I see here is that there are eight results. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the 27 off just in case there are other to jeans, or to, if I'm saying that wrong, y'all, just let me know. Uh, Tajin, I don't even know. Okay, so now I'm seeing how many of those there are. At the bottom here, you'll see it says 12 results. These are how many are up right now on eBay. And some of them are brand new, some of them are pre-owned. The next thing I'm gonna do, is I see that there are 12, but I wanna know how many have sold. I'm gonna select filter at the top and I'll scroll down to sold items. And to find out like what the, the sell through rate here is, is that I wanna see that the number that are up and the number that are sold are as close as possible. It's even better if there's more sold than there are up. That means you know that they are selling pretty quickly. It's something that's in demand. So in this case, there were 12 listed and there were 40 sold. So that means there are more sold then listed, so that's really, really good. So not only will this item bring a really high profit, it's also something that might sell really quickly. So I'm looking through how much they're selling for, and as you can see, some are done on auction. You can see where it says bids underneath. Some are done, uh, sold uh, by it now. Some have free shipping, but overall, I can see that this is an item that 
is giving me a lot of really good profit. So if I stick to my big, high, or fast, this is something that is going to be a high return on investment, and it might also be a really fast seller. So I found that in the bins that had just rolled out, and I decided I would go through those really quickly before I hit any of the shelves. And I am trying to attack the thrift store in an entirely different way. I don't want to automatically go to the sections that I always go to because I am trying to change things up. This day, however, I do decide that I will go look straight at kitchen items after I get done looking through the, the bins that have just rolled out. The reason that I decide to go ahead and check through the kitchen section is because I just found a Le Creuset. And sometimes when you find one, you find more. So it's a good idea to go and check and see if there are others of this really high-end brand that you found. Unfortunately, there were not any more Le Creuset items, but I did start looking at a few other things. Now, this is the kind of stuff I would have picked up before, and I'm having to remind myself, is it big, is it high, or is it fast? And automatically, on some of these, I know it's not going to be a big lot of something. It's not going to be a high return on investment, and it's not going to be a fast seller. Well, it might be a fast seller, but some of them I don't even think are worth looking up at this point. I really am trying to be way more strategic with what I buy because I am doing this full time and I need to make sure that I'm being smart with my purchases and with my time. The next item I spy is this Crate and Barrel Red Ceramic Mixing Bowl. Crate and Barrel is a brand that I like to pick up. Usually it brings in a high return on investment. Sometimes it's a fast seller. This is a nice ceramic mixing bowl, and when I look it up, with Crate and Barrel Red Ceramic Mixing Bowl, I see that there's a few different varieties here, and I need to narrow this down because there are different sizes, different varieties. So what I want to do at this point is I'm going to come up to my description, and I'm going to add in the word solid before red to try to narrow it down to a solid red mixing bowl. I see here that there are a couple. I, there's one that's up for sale for $24.95. There is the set, because it does initially come in a whole set, for $69.95. And then there's a smaller one that's up for $5.50. So it's not looking promising, but I do want to go ahead and check out the sold. So showing the sold items, there are one result for that, and that's with the two. But if you notice also that this red and yellow mixing bowl from Crate and Barrel are the ribbed ones. So it's got like ridges and that's not uh, what this one is either. It's something that I'm not going to pick up. Also, the one here has a chip, so it's definitely going to stay on the shelf. I don't see anything else in the kitchen section with pots and pans that jump out at me. But I do check in the lids to see if I see any high-end lids, say for Le Creuset or or other brands that might be more desirable. I don't see any though. So going from there, I do start noticing that there are some Wilton cake pans. Wilton cake pans are completely hit or miss, but I see some like Pikachu and there is a Garfield one and Barney. I think there's also a Ninja Turtle one that I end up picking up to look at. So I am going to look these up because once again, these are not some that I'm just going to automatically pick up like I might have in the past. If they were cheap enough, I might have picked them up and just let them sit till they sold, you know, long tail. But I'm not doing that anymore. So there's that Ninja Turtle one. Let's look these up and see if they're going to be worth me picking up and taking home. Are they big? Are they high? Are they fast? Let's find out. So here is the Ninja Turtle one. I see there are 247, I'm moving around too much, 247 Ninja Turtle pans. And when I check out the solds, looks like there are 44 results. So there's a lot more up than there are for, there are a lot more up for sale than there are that have sold. There are different types, but I'm thinking that's not something I want to pick up. It looks like they're selling okay. I mean, for the price, they're selling for a good price, but I don't want to hold on to it for that long. 
So let's take a look at, looks like I'm looking at the Garfield one next. This Garfield one, you know, they're asking about 350. If these, you know, like the Ninja Turtle one, if it was selling for $20, $25, then over time, if I was willing to hold on to it for that, it looks like there's 291 Garfield. Let's see though, how many have sold. They're kind of all over the place. There's different sizes and styles, but 291 Garfield. And then I'm gonna come over and click on sold. And right here, 69. So once again, I want those numbers to be a lot closer together. This is what I'm doing because I'm out and about. If I'm back at home, I could look it up with Terra Peak to find out what the actual ROI is. Um, or sell through rate, I mean the sell through rate. Okay, Pikachu, you would think, you know, Pokemon's pretty hot. Is Pikachu going to be something worth picking up? Again, 350, well, you know, if it's worth it, it's worth it. Let's look at Pikachu. Pikachu, there are six results. Okay, that looks promising. Six results on Pikachu. They're up for sale for $20, $30. All right, let's see how many have sold. And when we go over here for solds, looks like there are 20. So there are more sold than are actually up, and I like that. So it looks like they're around $20 or so. Now I'm checking condition. It's got a few scuffs and bumps, but overall looks pretty good. So this is something that would probably sell pretty quickly. If I pick it up for 350, here's a pan. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want this pan after all. If I pick it up for 350 and sell it for $20, that's a $15 return on investment, which is pretty good. The next thing I find are these shoes. And as I don't know a whole lot about shoes or brands, I decide to go ahead and look them up. They look pretty cool to me. But as it turns out, they're not worth picking up. So those are a pass. I am having to take it back to the bare bones again and just look everything up to double check. I've got to forget what I think I know and start digging into things that I, I know I don't know. The next thing I find is this Energizer Bunny plush. Unfortunately, his sunglasses are broken, but I decided to go ahead and look them up. There are 110 up for sale and 46 that have sold. And the solds are around $20, $30. Um, that one's got free shipping though. So it wouldn't be terrible to pick it up depending on how much they were asking for it. But because that one's broken, I am not going to pick it up. The next thing that I find is this Star Wars Porg, I think is how you say that. There were 24 up for sale and there were six that had sold. They were kind of all over the place and this one's got some damage. So I decided to go ahead and leave this Porg behind. 7.49? Nah. So I've kind of crept into some of the areas that I'm a little more comfortable with and I end up having to pull myself back out because I just started, like I say, going into areas that I'm more comfortable thrifting in and I'm really trying to be more strategic about how I'm picking things up. So I realized that I do not need to pick up this dinosaur at all, but I do find myself in the mug section <laughs> before I realize what am I doing? I'm supposed to be doing this differently. But, you know, it's actually kind of good to go through the things that you think you know already and just take a step back and, again, look at it with that beginner's mindset. Forget what you already know. So these mugs, I go ahead and look them up. There are 86 blue mugs from this brand. I can't remember what it was right now. And there were 19 that had sold. So this was something that, and a lot of them had sold as a set, which I don't generally do. So this was something that I definitely was going to pass on. The next mug that I find here is one that I would generally have picked up because I have found in the past that the character Marie Jolie from Aristocats usually sells really well. So it's good that I'm doing this and forcing myself to take a step back for everything because I look Marie Jolie up and she is just really not worth picking up at all. So making sure I'm looking up the right item, I see 346 Marie Jolie Aristocats mugs up on eBay. And when I narrow down my search and check out the sold listings, there are 132 sold with the keywords that I'm using. So that's just too far apart. I think maybe I found one of that particular mug. Uh, so really I saved myself, you know, $3 and whatever, which is insane to spend on a mug right now anyway. Uh, and it look only selling for like 10, 
So it's going to have to go back on the shelf for sure for this one. I do end up hanging out with the mugs because that's something I've really enjoyed selling. But both of these mugs that I end up looking up, again, $2.50 a piece is just more than I want to spend, first of all. Second of all, when I sit down and do my research and don't just go off, well, pandas sell and foxes sell and take uh, more time again, making sure that I'm counting my dimes like it's my last dime and being smart about it. No, these are not things that I'm going to want to pick up to have sit and not sell for maybe six months, a year or longer. The next mug I find is a Ray Dunn mug, which can be really hit or miss, mostly miss more lately. However, this one is Alice in Wonderland, and even though I'm looking it up just for funsies, I'm going to be giving it to my mom because she collects everything Alice in Wonderland. The next item is this Disney Lion King stamp set, and I can use the barcode scanner on eBay to scan the barcode so that it pulls up what items are there that where they use the barcode. I see that there are two items listed for $10, and then when I select on sold, there is one that has sold for $12.50. So I don't think I want to spend, I mean, still it's like a $8 profit, which isn't terrible, but I go ahead and leave this behind. Let me know if you would have picked it up. I kind of feel like I should have now. It was an $8 profit. It might have sold quickly. I don't know. All right, so next is this Vince Camuto bag. I think I'm probably saying that last name right. Uh, it's in really good shape, leather outer. So because it's a brand that I think I've seen before, it looks really nice, kind of got that pebbled finish to it. I decide I'm going to go ahead and look it up. There are quite a few up for sale that are they're not up for a ton. I mean, look at this, over 2,800 results. So I look at how many sold, 618 sold. And depending on the make of the purse, I mean, the ones that were more similar to this one were more in the $20 range, and they wanted $10.50 for this. So I decide, I mean, look, there are some that are really worth a lot, but I think it's something that I am going to pass on because the ones that are more like this are closer to that $20 range. The next purse I find, I know immediately when I see those keys on the back what it is. This is a purse for concealed carry handguns. So I'm pretty excited at first about this one because I'm thinking, oh yes, this is going to be a nice one. However, that strap is wrecked. I don't know how that happened. The purse looks great. It's not damaged or peeling anywhere on the purse. The keys are still there, but the handle is messed up. So... I go back and forth about what to do on this one. I keep thinking, you know what? I could get another handle or like a strap for it. You know, maybe buy another purse and swap the straps out because these um, concealed carry handgun handbags can be very pricey. So I decided to go ahead and look it up and see what we're looking at here with this purse. I couldn't find one that was an alligator style. But as you can see here, I mean, we're looking at $75, $65. They, they're really pricey handbags. I mean, most of these that I'm seeing are new, but there are a couple of these pre-owned used ones that are selling for a decent price as well. So it's worth looking up. I did entertain the idea of buying another purse and then switching the handles on both of them, of course, buying them both uh, to resell. But I decided to go ahead and leave it behind, even though it probably would have brought a good profit if I could get a new handle on it. It just didn't fit into my big, high, or fast plan for the moment, so it had to stay behind. So if you're wanting to be thrifting and reselling more strategically, then make sure that you're following my journey of really starting to thrift garage sale and pick things up that are going to make money now make sure you've hit that subscribe button and i'm linking a video here sharing some of my recent sales and youtube thinks that this is a video that you'll like thanks so much for spending your time with me and i'll see you on the next one bye